Hello everyone, thanks for joining me. I'm Keith Armour, I'm the Education and Homework Support Manager down here in the Adult Learning Center at the Main Library. Today's Lunch and Learn is going to be about National Children's Book Week, which actually takes place twice during the year. Um, it's going to be May the 3rd uh, through the 9th, that's next week. And then the next one is November the 8th through the 14th. But we are going to visit um, this wonderful website, which is Every Child a Reader. And we really want to encourage, not just because we're the library, but we really want to encourage everyone um, to continue to do something that a lot of families have been doing since this pandemic, and that is gathering around and reading stories together. It's very, very important. As a former school teacher, um, I taught the little ones second and third grade. And I'm telling you, the importance of reading to children is just unbelievable. The, 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 the bonding that takes place between you, their parent, their caregiver, um, is so vital for their development. So we're going to look at the resources that um, every child is a reader um, has for us. And then, of course, resources that the library can help you out. All right. So let's take a look. All right, we've arrived at Every Child a Reader website, and we'll provide a link for you to get right to this page because it has all of the different great fun stuff that you have access to for Children's Book Week, which actually starts next Monday. It goes from May the 3rd to May the 9th. And then there is another Children's Book Week that is in the fall, which is November the 8th through the 14th. And we'll uh, provide some information for that uh, when the time comes. But right away, uh, we're going to click right here, May the 3rd through the 9th, and Book Week Superpower. So reading is a superpower, and here are all sorts of different information that you would want to know. Um, I did not realize that Children's Book Week was actually established in 1919. I did not realize that it had been around that long. So um, I think it's great that uh, we're going to highlight it. And we have a program for you that we're going to do at the library as well. And I'll give you information about that in a moment as well. So you've got um, exclusive new bookmarks from wonderful book illustrators. You've got the Superpower Challenge. You've got step-by-step -step drawing instructions. And let's just go back one and we'll go to the poster. So let's take a real good look at this poster and we can download the poster here. So there's the poster, a great looking poster. And then there's a download activity single page. And this is all the different things that you can do that's are related to the poster. So you could, um, you could read a graphic novel. You could read a book on poetry. You can ask a librarian for a book recommendation. You can read an award-winning book, um, all sorts of things. You can pick out um, pick one of your favorite book characters. Uh, you can use this as a comic book starter here. So you can create your own superhero comic book. So I just think it's great that they have this and all you have to do is print it out. And of course, if you wanna print any of these things out, you can come to your local library and at Cincinnati Hamilton County Public Library, we're offering free printing right now. Now, another thing that's always great is having a bookmark. You click here, these are the 2021 bookmarks and each of these bookmarks have something really unique about them. Uh, let's just click on the very first one. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so you can see it. Um, here's the bookmark over here on the side. And of course, reading is a superpower. There's the dates. There's the website that will be in the links for you. But you are the storyteller. What goes in the scene? Draw it in all the details. So the child can go ahead and create their own superhero, making themselves a superhero and what they're going to be saving in the background. And each one of these bookmarks has something very unique about them. So every superhero, of course, needs a sidekick. And so uh, I don't know if you want the book thief, but you can create your own sidekick right here. 
And here's another great illustration on the side. You can just cut it right there for the bookmark. And that is accessible. Let's just go look at all of them real quick. I have to make it a, a little bit bigger each time. Oh, made it too big that time. But here's the bookmark over here. Uh, if you like tur turtles and if you like kittens that are riding the turtles, um, that's great. But here um, are some puppets that you could uh, have the child cut out and then put it together and then create your own puppet story as well. And then we'll check this one out. This one is really kind of interactive and kind of fun because you've got uh, reading as a superpower, but you've got all of these instruments and different things here in English. But then you have the Spanish words down here and you can put the Spanish words for the English words there. And then this one right here is where you want to make these ordinary people into superheroes. And so how would you make these ordinary people into superheroes? I think this is one of my favorites because I just love all that purple on the side, but there's the bookmark on this side and then an activity on that side. All right. And then of course you can print all five bookmarks right there from there. Okay. And I'll even tell you a little bit more about the bookmark creators here. You can follow them on some of them are on all sorts of different things like Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. And you can learn a little bit more about them. And these are also previous years. It won't go back to uh, 1919, <laughs> but it goes all the way back to 2008 for the bookmarks. So there are the bookmarks for Children's Book Week. And this is a really fun one too, because sometimes when um, people write books, they um, sometimes draw the pictures themselves, they're illustrators, or they get someone to be an illustrator. And this is a great way to get kids interested in, in illustration along with their children's books. And each one of these pages is a different activity. Here's how to draw an alligator, uh, how to draw a little bat, um, different, uh, here's a dinosaur, here's some dogs here. And of course you could print and download the entire book right here by full drawing characters books. And I think there's like 20 something pages on that. So you can check that out. But let's, let's just look at this one right here, how to draw an alligator. And so I'll show you each one. And there's some reading that is taking place while you're drawing your alligator. And then there's a picture that the child could draw, uh, color as well. All right. So I think that's a great activity for them to do. You know, we've had all this talk about uh, Mars and returning to the moon. And you could draw an astronaut here. Um, but there's just so many great activities on here. Now, if I come over here, um, this is about the last resource um, that would be pretty helpful. We will go over here, but let's check on Pledge to Participate. Now, at first it's like, oh yeah, it's a pledge. Uh, they give us the definition of a superpower. It's a skill, a personal trait, or a passion that plays an important role in your life, helps you do good in the world, and makes you feel special, happy, and confident. That is a great definition for superpower. Um, but here down here are different superpower activities. This one is STEM, and that's science, technology, engineering, and math. So let's just click on this. And here is um, different activities that you could do um, that center around science. So you could go for a walk. You could create a superhero buddy using an uncooked egg. Um, this is a little bit more involved. Uh, you could read a book. You could find a great book about STEM or science. And each one of these activity pages, like here, social activism, has some great activities. Connect with an adult in your community who's involved in social activism. Think of something that's important to you that's impacting your family, friends, or community. and Find out how you can get involved. Find a great book. 
draw a comic strip. So each one of these will go over a different thing. So here's for the arts, here's for community engagement, here is for identity and culture, here's for physical fitness and sports. So if we click right here, some of the activities, make up your own sport or game, create an obstacle course. I've seen a lot of obstacle courses on YouTube and TikTok these days, and it looks like a fun way to interact. Uh, hike or nature walk, uh, ask for a book recommendation on a theme from a friend. And then you've got um, environment and climate, you've got the humanities, and you've got mental health and wellness. And a lot of times, it seems like we are all kind of dealing with our own mental health these days by um, living through the pandemic and things are starting to change a little bit. But a lot of times kids have a real hard time uh, understanding that kind of change. And so sometimes I would, I would recommend that you really kind of understand where kids are coming from when it comes to mental health and wellness. So here's some good activities that you could possibly do um, to get your children to be talking about how they feel about different things as well. Now, if you're curious, and I think this is what where the library comes in, there's a book list for each one of these. So if I wanted to click on mental health and wellness, because that's not an easy subject just to come up, you know, just to spring. Oh, here, let's talk about mental, our mental health, Junior. Um, but here's a list of books that kind of get you, get, um, the, you know, here's Bear's Book of Emotions. Um, I'm not a label. I am. I can. Um, it's a, It will be okay. These are some great ways to kind of read a book with the child and then, of course, start a conversation about about those issues. And I just think this collection, which is not just picture books, but it's also middle school books and young adult books as well. So check that out. I think all of these book lists really come in handy. Um, so you can, uh, here's a whole superpowers, a superheroes and superpowers book. And you can even print off a certificate that looks pretty fancy for children's book week. So you could challenge your child so let's do five activities. Let's or let's do one child one day each day of, of children's book week. Let's do something, and then you could present them with a certificate. All right, let's go ahead and look at the next thing. Let me go back one. And so we went here. Um, let's go right here to resources. Oh, uh, these two. It's this one right here. Resources for home. So if I click here. And you'll see here's Celebrate at Home and Online. So if I click on that, and you can see here are it's a little bit of it broken down for you to celebrate at home. So I would highly recommend that you check out this website, Every Child a Reader. A lot of great programs, a lot of great activities, uh, things that you can do totally for free. And um, if you're an educator, of course, you can uh, check out the educator kit and there's a uh, partner resources and then all sorts of other things here that you can celebrate. All right. So let's go to our public website. And I want to point out something. If I go to books and media up here and I click here and then I go over here to kids and families, then the website's going to change for you. And this is a great way to see what's coming up at the library. Here's an outdoor story time, and we're having a lot more outdoor story times. Now, these, of course, have happened in the past, but you can see more events here. Here's very timely, because you know cicadas are coming. And uh, Miss Gwen from the Hamilton County Conservation District is actually reading this book. And uh, you can check that out. You can watch on YouTube. There's so many wonderful stories. Uh, story times from our children's librarians, and then of course guests, and then you can look at their calendar as well. Now, here's a section just on favorite books for kids. Now, I taught second grade and third grade, and I'm telling you, the best part of my day was story time. And I would have a story time in the morning um, where you would feature children, um, children's books that would go with the theme of the day or the theme for the month. 
And then of course, later on, I would do a chapter book as well. It's always great to include um, chapter books when you're reading to children. You can always read uh, a chapter book, a harder book to a child that's about two or three grades higher than the child could read themselves. It's a great opportunity to share that opportunity with um, reading a book and getting that experience, using some funny voices. And even if the child asks for a book to be read over and over and over again, that's a great way of getting them to understand the language even more. The other thing you could do is, of course, if the child is reading a book over and over and over again, go to your librarian at your local library and say, hey, my child really likes this particular book. What would you select? And here is um, staff picks for kids here. And this is just a nice list of books that have been coming out in 2021. And of course, you can check them out. You can place a hold. So I'm going to go back one list. And here's autism awareness picks, the grow reader with gardening books, tree terrific books, celebrate Earth Day. It's still National Poetry Month. And then down here are new books that are um, that can be checked out. These are picture books here. And I, you gotta love this title, Old MacDonald Had a Phone. If I click to that, all of a sudden you'll see that it's gone to our catalog. And you'll notice that there's 15 copies. There's 13 that are available. I can click right here and I can see where they're all available, okay? So if you wanna pick one up curbside or you go on in, that's perfectly fine too. You can also look right here and you can just scroll down and see the different books there. Now this one also comes in an ebook e format. So if I click here, I can go to the ebook and that's on Hoopla. And then I can enjoy this book, Old MacDonald um, Had a Phone. And he loves his phone, he helps organize his farm. Uh, and so that's, that just sounds like such a fun book. All right, I'm gonna click back. Let me click back to my page that I was on. Let's see if I can get back there in time. There we go. All right, so not only do we have this selection, this little scroll of books here, but here are new board books that are out. And talk about a great time to sit and read to children with board books. Here are all sorts of different ones. Here's Blanky, you gotta love that title. And you, of course you can view all. And then these are some books that are on order. So they're not available yet, um, but if you take your grandkids, and you go to the ocean, that might be a great book. Monarch Butterflies, all sorts of great books that are on order that are gonna be part of our collection pretty soon, okay? And then you've got great read alouds down here as well. Trombone Shorty, not only is he a great trombone player, but it's a great read along as well on here. And don't forget, we still are doing our, our, our take and makes at the library, so you can always check those out. And then um, also I wanna point out on the same page, you've got Overdrive for Kids here. You've got, of course, our help now for homework. Um, I know that's, Still a terrible word to say around children. Say, oh, have you done your homework? But this will really be helpful. Um, if you would like to find activities for preschoolers and real early elementary children, children in elementary schools, um, World Book Early Learning is wonderful. And then there's Tumble Books and then ABC Mouse that you have to do in the library. But then there's BookFlix as well. BookFlix has such a great array of different books that are out there, all right? Okay, so I'm gonna go here now. We're running short on time, so let's go to Books and Media and we're going to go stream and download here. And I'm just gonna show you, now of course you can stream children's books from Hoopla and, and Overdrive, but I'm going to go to Libby. Remember, Libby and Overdrive are the same. And because I've already gotten, um, I'm already in the 
kids and family section, it already defaults for me to the kids section. You'll notice that each one of the different sections, the general adult is a certain color and the kids is orange. And um, so you see, here's fun in the garden, a lot of different books, and you'll notice that it says available here. It also tells you if it's an ebook down here. A lot of times kids get really, really interested in dinosaurs. Well, we definitely have you covered when it comes to dinosaurs. And then uh, books about real people, uh, about uh, Muhammad Ali, about Kobe Bryant. Um, here is Kindness Matters. Um, it's always a great way to um, celebrate Children's Book Week by subtly <laughs> um, talking about things such as kindness and, and how those things are very important. Here's some chapter books for kids. Um, and um, what's really great is by, you know, let's just click on this whole list. There's just so many great chapter books. You've got Nate the Great. You've got Nancy Drew. And I know some of you grew up with Nancy Drew. And they've updated um, those stories. The Babysitter's Club was very popular when I was a kid. Um, of course, you kept Captain Underpants. You can't go wrong there. Um, but books that just seem to uh, jump out and, and really allow you and your child to really kind of enjoy them. And so you could read a chapter a day and then the children, you know, your child knows that, oh, next, next tomorrow, we're going to read the next chapter. And it's just a great way to keep the reading going. And I mean, look at this, just in favorite chapter book characters, there's over 1,700 of those. We keep going down. You'll see, um, and of course, here's some more 39 clues. You've got the Black Joy book list for children and young adults. This is a great list of books that just, I mean, if you click on it, you can just see all the wonderful titles that they have here. And just to let you and everybody um, embrace all of the great diversity that we have in our world every day. And we scroll down even further here, amazing animals. A lot of times if you have a reluctant reader, um, when I had reluctant readers in second grade or third grade, um, a lot of times you find out what interests them. And though nonfiction is the way to go. So we've got a whole section on amazing animals here. Graphic novels, um, I still consider it a comic book, but graphic novels tell a great story and it can get some of your reluctant readers in there as well. They don't realize they're really reading because it looks like a comic book. And then there's some great read, read alouds um, for emerging readers. So you could read a page, they could read a page. And then this is something that I just discovered while putting this Lunch and Learn kind of together. I did not realize we had this. These are sign stories for kids. So if I go to Moo, Misery Moo, and you'll notice that all of them are videos, but let's just watch a sample real quick. If I hit a sample. The next time the lamb saw her, the cow was as miserable as ever. So here you have a person that is um, reading the story, you, misery, but then you have a person Said over here signing the story. Old view. Now, I know some Moment of you are thinking, cow. well, why would I really want to do that if I don't have a child that is learning American Sign Language? That's a great way to introduce differences to children. To show them, you know, that's the reason why sometimes when you see an interpreter on the TV, why they're doing it. It's a great way for children to identify with other children um, and, uh, that are a little bit different than them. But if, of course, you have a child um, that is um, learning and not only learning to read, but also learning American Sign Language, what a great resource that we have in here. I just did not realize we had that, and I just thought that was really cool. All right, so I'm running out of time, so I want to show you an event that is happening, and it's just not happening one time. It's happening three times, and it is the Who Can Save the Library in Circulation City, and it is our celebration of Children's Book Week. 
Uh, reading is a superpower with the creation of your own superhero using this bio sheet that will be sent to you. This is a virtual program. And Miss Carrie is an absolutely wonderful children's librarian over in Blue Ash. And she's doing this program not only on the 3rd, uh, next Monday, but also next Tuesday and next Thursday. And you'll notice there's some um, different times. So 4.30 to 5.15, 4.15 to 5, and then this one's 6.30 to 7.15. So I'll put a link there for you so you can um, register for this program because things are going to be uh, filling up pretty quickly. We also want to fill up everyone's bellies if they need some food. And so our meal program for youth is still going on. That's Mondays from 3 to 5. And if you know any children or if you have children that need some food, these are our locations. And it's really important. Um, sorry, but our north side branch is temporarily closed for repairs, but all of these other locations. So if you do know a family or children that are in need, let them know about our meal box service. And of course, we have some frozen meals too for our families, and that's Mondays um, from three to six, and that's wonderful partners from La Soup, and that's at those locations. And there's all sorts of different activities that are going on at the library. One that I just thought was hilarious was find baby Yoda in the library. And this is happening over in Wyoming, and um, so you can find Baby Yoda. Uh, this is the way Baby Yoda is hiding in the library. If you find him, come to the desk and tell us where you see him and then get a prize. One prize per day per customer. So they're hiding Baby Yoda in several different places. Uh, it looks like throughout uh, next week for um, Children's Book Week. So you could definitely, Children's Reading Week, so you could definitely check that out at Wyoming. There's other activities too. Um, I know Sharonville is decorating a spring mass next Tuesday. And one thing that I always have, a, uh, I, I never have any time to show you this, um, things that are happening on Thursday, but this is the introduction to finding grants. And Kent is our librarian over in the Information Reference Department. He does such a great job on helping people with um, finding grants. And we have this wonderful foundation directory online database um, that uh, sounds very spooky, but he will show you how to use that effectively. And that is a class that you could sign up that's going to happen next Thursday, May the 6th, from 2 to 3.30. So definitely check that out. All right, I'm going to click out and uh, tell you a few more things, and we'll call it a day. All right, um, that is a lot to focus on for uh, Children's Book Week, which is all next week, May 3rd through the 9th. And of course, the theme is reading is a superpower. And you could be a super um, person um, by gathering your grandchildren around your children or children in your care and reading them a story. There's all those great activities from that website from Every Child is a Reader. And we'll provide a link for that. But also, don't forget all those activities that you can print out. And if you're thinking, I don't have a printer, don't worry. You can print here at the library. And those are great activities to do that for. Um, there's all the great story times that are happening, uh, not just virtually now, but outdoor story times. So make sure you check um, your local library and when they're going to have their outdoor story time. That's always a great way. Um, to get all those stories in and get children really interested in reading. And speaking of spring, uh, we are having still, we still have signups for our spring flower, um, our spring flower virtual program. You can check that out as well. And then next Thursday, a lot of times we have lunch and learn, I cannot really promote anything for Thursday. Um, but I want to point out um, Kent, who is in our information and reference department, he does a fantastic job with introduction to finding grants. And he does a great job. So if you know someone or if you are part of a nonprofit and you're looking for additional funds out there, this is a great introduction class. And it takes place uh, next Thursday from 2 to 3.30. All right. 
So don't forget about our free meal program as well that's still going on. And we're really starting to get ready for um, summer. Um, and the library has a lot of things that we have planned for the summer to get you all involved. Um, so check that out. And next week, um, I'll see you next week for lunch. All right. Have a good week.